Uh, thank you very much, Alain. So we are going to talk about uh, uh, the mechanism, prevalence, and uh, consequences of core pulmonal. As you all know, ARDS is a disease of the uh, alveoli, but it's also a disease of the neighboring capillaries. Uh, in these capillaries, you can see that the inflammatory uh, the inflammation uh, seen in the alveoli is also present. Uh, so many factors are going to uh, induce uh, what we call lung vascular dysfunction during ARDS. The first uh, factors are linked to uh, pulmonary vasoconstriction uh, because there is uh, a certain degree of uh, hypoxic vasoconstriction, many mediators inducing vasoconstriction, and uh, a level of vessel compression uh, due to the edema. There is also vaso-occlusion because of endothelial lesions, thrombosis, and uh, remodeling. So concerning uh, the vasoconstriction, you know that the first phenomenon is hypoxic vasoconstriction, which is adaptive uh, to correct for the ventilation perfusion mismatch. Uh, some authors uh, say that it could be blunted uh, during ARDS, but uh, there are uh, some arguments to think that there is a degree of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. This is a study uh, in patients with uh, uh, ECMO, uh, and when uh, you increase uh, the partial pressure of oxygen uh, in the pulmonary artery, you see a decrease in the resistances uh, in the pulmonary uh, vessels, uh, so uh, you alleviate the uh, pulmonary uh, vasoconstriction, and you see that the shunt increases uh, in parallel. On top of that, you have many vasoconstrictive mediators, which have been described, thromboxane, for example. Uh, other one is leukotrienes uh, or endothelins. You can see that during ARDS, when you uh, measure the concentration of endothelin, you have more of endothelin after the pulmonary circulation as compared to the one measured uh, in the pulmonary uh, artery. Uh, and all those mediators could constrict the pulmonary vessels. The second phenomenon is the remodeling. You see that there is a lot of intimal thickening uh, within uh, the media of the small uh, pulmonary uh, arteries, and there is also a degree of occlusion. As compared to a normal adult, you see that there is a deperfusion uh, of the small vessels uh, when using arteriography in um, uh, deceased patients with uh, early uh, ARDS. And this occlusion is due to thrombosis uh, with platelet fibrin thrombi, uh, which is seen in almost all patients with ARDS in small vessels in also uh, big vessels and seen in all phases of uh, ARDS. So many anatomical uh, derangements and on top of that, you will add mechanical ventilation, which is going to increase the volumes, the pressures to induce lung strain, uh, and some strategies like permissive hypercapnia can worsen the situation. Concerning the mechanical effect of mechanical ventilation, you see that you know that there is a compression uh, of the uh, vessels on the venous return, which is going to decrease the preload of the right ventricle, and also a compression of the capillaries due to the increase in transpulmonary pressure, which is going to increase the afterload of the right ventricle. And uh, in this situation, during the isovolumic relaxation of the left ventricle, when the pressure is still high in the right side, you can have uh, a big pressure in the right ventricle as compared to the left ventricle with a shift of the interventricular septum towards the left ventricle cavity. Uh, <coughs> this is what is called septal dyskinesia, which is one of the features uh, defining core pulmonal, which is an association of a dilatation of the right ventricle and septal dyskinesia, a paradoxical motion of the interventricular septum. So the main mechanism leading to core pulmonal is uh, this afterload effect due to the compression of the pulmonary uh, capillaries. And uh, the effect of the ventilation is a little bit complicated because uh, on the one hand, when you increase the pressures, you are going to increase uh, this afterload and induce uh, dilatation of the right ventricle, but below a certain level of PEEP, you can also cause atelectasis and worsen the circulation. Uh, so PEEP can have a dual effect, and uh, when looking at what is the culprit pressure, uh, in the last study we did, we have the impression that 
the driving pressure uh, is the pressure which is uh, most tightly linked to uh, this afterload effect and indu induction of uh, uh, core pulmonal. The uh, other mechanism, uh, very important during RDS, is hypercapnia. When you induce acute hypercapnia, like in this study, uh, going from 50 to 80, you see a drop in cardiac index, which is due to right ventricle failure. Uh, as you can see, there is a dilatation of the right ventricle uh, and a deformation of the left ventricle uh, due uh, to core pulmonal because hypercapnia can be a, a potent uh, pulmonary vasoconstrictor. Uh, and in all studies looking at the uh, prevalence of core pulmonal, you can see that in patients with core pulmonal in green as compared to those without, uh, there is a higher level of PCO2 uh, in the first group so hypercapnia is associated with uh, the occurrence of uh, core pulmonal in all these series. So what is the prevalence? Uh, using echocardiography as a reference standard, the prevalence in patients with uh, protective mechanical ventilation, meaning a, a tidal volume below 8 and a, a plateau pressure uh, below 30, in all studies is around 22%, between 20 uh, and 25%, of patients uh, ventilated uh, with protective mechanical ventilation. And the main risk factors uh, are uh, a first heat, so pneumonia as a cause of RDS, leading to all those anatomical changes we, s we have seen in the beginning, uh, an increase in the, the pulmonary uh, str stretch, uh, and the best uh, predictor of that is a, 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 a big driving pressure. Uh, Hypoxemia is a risk factor, uh, and probably uh, the role of uh, um, hypoxic uh, vasoconstriction is here. And uh, PCO2 uh, above 80, uh, 48 was also a risk factor in this big study uh, where we uh, included more than 1,700 uh, patients. Uh, and based on those risk factors, we were able to uh, build a score uh, and the, the higher the score, uh, the higher the probability uh, to have a core pulmonal or severe core pulmonal, uh, which is a core pulmonal with a very dilated right ventricle. And you see that there is increasing mortality uh, with uh, the increasing incidence of uh, severe core pulmonal. So uh, it could be uh, suggested to uh, perform routinely transesophageal uh, echocardiography uh, to assess for core pulmonal in patients with a higher uh, risk uh, score. Now, what are the consequences uh, of core pulmonal in these patients with uh, ARDS? Uh, there are two types of consequences. One of them is uh, hemodynamic. You will see that the responsiveness to fluid is complex in this situation, and core pulmonal can lead to right ventricle failure. Uh, the second uh, consequence is oxygenation with a possibility of worsening oxygenation uh, uh, through uh, uh, a reopening of uh, foramen ovale. So first, concerning uh, the fluid responsiveness, in this very uh, interesting study by uh, the group of Xavier Monet, they were able to show that uh, when you increase PEEP in ARDS patients, you have a decrease in cardiac index, uh, which is due to uh, an afterload effect as suggested here by the increase uh, in pulmonary vascular resistances in parallel. And the interesting thing was that when performing a passive leg raising, they were able to restore the cardiac index by uh, relieving uh, the afterload uh, uh, effect. Uh, so one explanation could be uh, the reopening of some pulmonary capillaries uh, by uh, the passive leg raising. Uh, so some patients are going to be fluid responsive in this situation, but not all of them, uh, probably because we need to also take into account uh, the, what is called the parallel effect, which is the dilatation of the right ventricle uh, can impede uh, on the uh, feeling of the left ventricle in case of uh, uh, a paradoxical motion of the interventricular septum. This study is not uh, done in ARDS patients, but during massive pulmonary embolism by uh, Alain Merca. And you see that the uh, response to fluid is variable with some responders and those uh, all, all the patients not responding. And when the authors tried to understand what was determining the uh, responsiveness, 
uh, one factor could be uh, the size of the right ventricle before uh, fluid loading the patient. You see that the higher the size of the right ventricle, uh, the lower the increase in cardiac index in response uh, to the fluid loading, uh, probably because when the ventricle is already uh, dilated, uh, you will have a shift uh, more pronounced towards the uh, left ventricle. So probably this can be an index uh, to uh, uh, like uh, a warning not to uh, fluid load uh, some patients with uh, ARDS and corpulmonal. Corpulmonal uh, can worsen the hemodynamics. Uh, you see that uh, uh, in uh, the majority of papers uh, on the subjects, patients with corpulmonal have uh, a lower uh, arterial pressure, uh, a higher prevalence of shock, and they require more often uh, vasopressors uh, uh, because uh, corpulmonal may lead to uh, right ventricle failure. Uh, another aspect of the question uh, is uh, the oxygenation. Uh, in case of increased pressure uh, within the right atrium, you can have a reopening uh, of a patent foramen ovale. Uh, in this echo, you can see that contrast uh, bubbles injected in the right atrium uh, pass through the foramen ovale and go uh, into the left atrium. So you have um, a shunt, an intracardiac shunt, and this phenomenon is not rare. Uh, in patients with moderate to severe ARDS, uh, we could find it uh, in almost 20% uh, of patients. And those reopening the afferment ovale uh, tended to have uh, a, a, a right ventricle which was more dilated, uh, higher pressures in the pulmonary artery, and a higher prevalence of uh, core pulmonale as compared to the others. And this phenomenon is important to assess during ARDS because uh, it can uh, alter the response to the PEEP. Uh, normally during ARDS in the majority of patients, when you increase the PEEP, you uh, recruit the lung and improve the oxygenation. Uh, so in the white squares here, you have uh, an increase in the PF ratio uh, when you increase the PEEP, but the response is different uh, in this dashed uh, uh, squares, uh, which are patients with uh, patent foramen ovale reopening, uh, there is no uh, overall response uh, in terms of oxygenation, probably because uh, the recruitment and the oxygenation gain due to recruitment is blunted uh, by the worsening of the shunt uh, due to increased afterload uh, with increased uh, values of PEEP. So probably in case of uh, foramen ovale, uh, you need to assess the precise uh, advantage of increasing PEEP, for example, uh, by uh, assessing the recruitment of the lung, uh, which is going to be associated with uh, a less severe worsening of the uh, afterload. The prognosis of core pulmonary during RDS is debated you see that in studies, uh, some authors have uh, reported no change in prognosis, and in some other studies, uh, the prognosis is worse uh, during pulmonal. And the differences between studies is probably due to the management of patients. Uh, in some studies like this one, all patients with pulmonale were treated with prone positioning in order to relieve uh, the right ventricle afterload. And in the biggest studies, we more than 700 patients, uh, the uh, pulmonal, when it was severe, so associated with a severe dilatation of the right ventricle, was associated with a worse prognosis. We also have signals with indirect markers of lung vascular dysfunction, uh, which are also uh, of worse prognosis, uh, using uh, echocardiography and defining moderate lung vascular dysfunction as uh, uh, simple pulmonary hypertension or, or simple dilatation of the right ventricle and severe dysfunction as core pulmonale. Uh, in this study, the prognosis was worse in case of lung vascular dysfunction. Also, uh, in this multi-center study, uh, the severe core pulmonale was of worse prognosis. So I'm going to go to the last slide to conclude that uh, core pulmonale uh, is present in about one-fifth of patients with ARDS it may alter hemodynamics and gas exchange, and the impact on prognosis uh, is significant unless <coughs> specific ventilatory management strategies are implemented. Thank you for your attention.